Hello. I've just had an operation. Do you mind if I sit on the stairs? I thought there'd be a podium so I could lean on it. Forgive me for being a little informal, but there it is. I just want to thank Adene. Uh, no, 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 I'm good. Uh, I want to thank Adene for what he has done over the years in promoting peace, and he deserves the Ambassador for Peace Award. I represent the, Uni the Universal Peace Federation. Um, we, our organization is in about 150 countries in the world, and it's the largest network of ambassadors for peace or peace builders in the world. It's made up of people of all faith um, and of all political persuasions, including all professions. Uh, we have parliamentarians as part of our work. We have religious leaders as part of our work. So you're probably wondering yourself, you're seeing the United Nations flag. So you're probably thinking, what does the UN have to do with all this? Um, as you well know, the UN uh, has, uh, in its founding ideals, was to promote peace on Earth. And, and after the Second World War, it, it gained uh, an important role in peace building. Uh, but I have to tell you that the reason why Universal Peace Federation was started is because many people became aware uh, in the political realm that the UN uh, needed to change it needed a way of reviving. So there were a lot of uh, diplomats and academics who were saying that the UN had reached a point where it wasn't really effective anymore. And uh, our federation proposed and got passed at the General Assembly that in fact uh, that religious people or should I say faith traditions should play a role in peace building and that the UN could not go forward in the current world situation without input from, from religion, which is a novel idea, but in fact it's not if you think about historically. The UN is, is a political organization. It's, it has diplomacy, it has processes that are basically political in nature. But let's face it, uh, this represents in some way, I'll show you, walk you through the journey, it only represents one aspect of human life. The other aspect of life, of human life, is spiritual. So the physical, political dimension and the way we operate here in Australia in our political institutions, in some way, if I may use an analogy, is like the body, but the body needs a mind and it needs a conscience. And if you have to realize that traditionally, historically, this church is part of a unification movement or which was originated, if you like, from God, from the beginning of history. And that means that we should become unified individuals. So, you know, I come from a Catholic background, so I, I, I don't usually preach, I might say, but I'll, if I can, I will tonight, because it's the right place, Pastor. You know, why do we celebrate Jesus as the Prince of Peace? I've asked myself this since I've been a child. The one thing that you can be sure of is that Jesus had integrity. That is, that to use the terms in our peace-building seminars, usually I do this with politicians and other people, Jesus had perfect mind and body unity. That is, that his value system and what he did was not separated, or how he behaved were not separated. So I ask you, and you might think, oh, that's a very simplistic term, but apply it to you, I just want to share with you, when I talk to leaders about mind and body unity, most people just look at me and go, what? Yeah, I've got mind and body unity. What are you talking about, John? But I have to tell you, if you're a spiritual person, then you are in the journey or the process of self-reflection. Would you agree? Now, I have to tell you, honestly, your faith is a blessing to you, maybe for nothing else. That in itself is powerful because you are reflecting about your own shortcomings. And if I may say, uh, none of us here can say that we have absolute perfect integrity, that we always follow what we believe is true. We always practice what we do. For most people, this would kind of go over their head. Why is that relevant? 
The first principle of peace building is that peace has to be built within ourselves. Otherwise, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't matter how much I preach about peace or talk about peace in my last 35 years I've been doing this, I realize my children aren't going to listen to me, my wife isn't going to take me seriously unless I myself can do this. So the number one principle of peace building begins with me, which by the way, just so you know, this is now a common understanding in universities in Australia where we talk about mindfulness. Uh, you know, I, I really believe that we live in the age in which science is now caught up with religion. It's not the other way around. And that means that the, the, the historic tradition that our God has set up in this world of bringing unity within the individual, unity within the family, these principles that our grandparents and great parents talked about are so relevant and applied today. So number one, you cannot have peace unless you have peace within yourself. I'll say it again, very simple term, isn't it? Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard that somewhere. I've heard that in many, many faiths. I've had a Buddhist come up to me and say, this is right, in my Buddhist tradition, I have to be at peace within myself. If you are familiar with one of the greatest Muslim writers, I know it's a Christian church, Rumi is a, a, a poet from, uh, for, who lived 800 years ago, he said exactly the same thing. He said, you know what, you can look for love, but why don't you first of all work out the obstacle within yourself that, don't, that, that is actually stopping you from loving other people. What are the two great commandments in our tradition? Now, somewhere I read, love God and love others as yourself. So love becomes the central value of life. Now, you guys might think that's really nice and warm and fuzzy, and I use that term all the time, including with politicians and academics. I say, is knowledge the central value of life? Because you've got a PhD. Is power, power is a big one. I don't know about you, but in our society, it's a big one. And money. But spiritual, religious tradition in history teaches that love is the central value of life. If you live that way, everything changes. For I come from North America, and I worked with, with pastors that worked with Dr. King. And, and Dr. King once said that if, if you change the way you look at your brother, your economics will change as well. And that means that the way we look at each other with the eyes of love. I mean, what is the great message of Christmas is love God and love others as yourself. That the, the central core or value of life is love. Again, a very nice, warm and fuzzy thought, but I have to tell you, this world needs this. Our world needs people who will look at each other and look at all elements from the eyes of love. And that is the, the, the first peace-building principle. The second. And then you'll have to stop me, because my wife always says, when you give John the microphone, you're in trouble. Before I go to the second point, which I, it's actually a joke from, um, that I heard in an American church uh, many years ago. Big American church. The pastor said this joke. So, you know, in North America, where I grew up, we used to go to church and we'd get, uh, we would get a nickel. You know what a nickel is? It's five cents, right? So, so we'd, we'd, I'd get a nickel and, you know, I'm Johnny and Johnny would get the nickel. And one nickel was for God and the other one was for, for Johnny after church. And uh, as Johnny always went to church and as little boys do, they played around. And I was looking at a manhole where the water goes down and then suddenly, as I was looking and playing, one of the nickels fell down out of my hand, and I went, uh-oh, there goes God's nickel. <laughs> but actually, this, this joke is a very good introduction for the second principle, is that why the Universal Peace Federation is advocating that religious faith play a role in peace building, not just the political dimension, is because the political dimension or the way that we go about solving problems in the world today 
unfortunately, excludes spiritual tradition, generally. Right? So if you look at the worldviews and the methodologies the political parties in this country operate under, bringing in a spiritual dimension is not a big thing. But in fact, it's that exclusion from the spiritual dimension that we are not really fulfilling a mandate of peace and, and building social cohesion. Third principle. The family is the school of love, is one of our principles. You know, think about that. Is every religious tradition or every human being on the planet loves their family? Christmas is the time of the family. I'm going to spend time with my family. You know, if you ever thought about it from a spiritual point of view, where does the family come from? Where does that model come from? It comes from our Creator. The family is the number one model for number one model for learning how to love. It's the number one model, and our world needs, knows this. There's the, probably a thousand studies about the importance of role of parents in bringing up children. The family is the school of love. The family is the model in which we naturally can live according to God's principles. It is the natural environment that we are meant to live in. So unity in the family is really, really important. So unity within ourselves in unity within the family, centered on the value of love. The third principle is that, and here's a radical thought, is that all religion in this day and age must learn to cooperate. And that requires us to move beyond sectarian views. And I know that's a bit radical, and that may not make some people happy, but I say it because I honestly believe that we live in a global village. So I once wrote to the prime minister and said, he said, well, we need to have Australian values, and I asked him, what are Australian values? And that's a really good question, because we live in a global village. We no longer live in an Australian village. We live in a global village. And in a global village, we are, we, we are faced with that reality right now. So how we respond to each other cannot be racist or sectarian. We need to really look at each other as one family under God. And in a global village, we need universally shared values. That's number four principle. We live in a global village, and we have to have a different mindset. So it is for us to build a moral world that we need to do, the f and I'll finish with that because I'll just keep going. I've got a lot of notes and other speakers. Is we need to counteract a selfish lifestyle. We need a revolution. And I have to tell you, this revolution was began by our God, and particularly Jesus, I have to say, coming from a Christian tradition, started that. And that revolution is live for others. The world we live in tells us to live for us. That's what I get. What did Jesus say? Love God with all your heart and love other people with all your heart. You know, and I often thought about this, and even my own sons, I've had five, four boys, are all grown up, and I always taught them this, is that by living for others, sometimes we think we lose, but actually we never lose. Because the world we live in tells us that if we serve other people, we will lose, but actually this is not true. It is the opposite. And I challenge you to do it. If you'd live that way, you'll realize, yep, it's true. I tell my students that. I'm a teacher. I... I teach information technology, and I always teach them that one thing. If I can, give them as a moral principle, live for others. And if in 10 years' time I, you feel that I robbed you and it was wrong, come and tell me. I've never had one student come back and tell me that. So you folks have to realize that you are part of a historic tradition of faith. And please have an open heart about other faiths. 
The open tradition of the pure faith is about living for others. The essence of religion is not fighting division based on doctrinal view. The essence of religion is love, and it's about living for others. We need a revolution that changed that, and you, your community here is part of that. And you should be really proud of that because the UN needs that revolution and politics needs that revolution because we have to learn to live for other people. And we will never lose. So I think, honestly, I tell you from my own experience, I think what Jesus taught us was he did not give us that advice, I think, lightly. And I don't believe that he led us astray. That we will never lose. If we love God and we love others, we will never lose. This is an amazing concept. Because the world, do you think this world really understands that? I'm telling you now, I'm, I spend most of my time as a peace builder trying to convince people that they should think of others. Beyond their own views. That's it. And if I could do that, I, I feel I've done something in my life. I've accomplished something. And your pastors and your leaders, that's what they're encouraging you to do. It's amazing. Think about that. So one, you have that kind of mindset, but you're also able to self-reflect. You're able to look at yourself and realize through your own spiritual tradition that you need to change. I, I tell people... Um, you know, you need to change and, you know, your mind and body is not united. And to be honest with you, most of the audiences I talk to, even people who are looking at peace building principles, it kind of goes over their head a little bit because they don't realize that they're not there yet. You might say something, but it doesn't mean you do it. I mean, even Paul, and I say honestly to you, and I'll finish with that, I think St. Paul was an honest person. I think he honestly shared his own struggles and said, with my mind I desire to do the will of God, but with my body I find another law at war with the body, with the war of my mind. And do you know what he was defining? Do you know what he was talking about? The human condition. The human condition. We may believe something's right, but we don't always do it. So the element that allows us to do it, and I think rightfully so, is the love of God. So, experiencing, having a spiritual experience allows me to have the power to do this. And that's what Paul said, by the way. This is not just Paul. I just want to share with you that in history, most faiths recognize the human condition, that we are kind of morally dysfunction. We believe in something, but we don't practice it. We, you know, we're, we're in this kind of struggled position. And historically, whether I'm, you know, I'm studied various faith and looked at that, and I realized that's true. That's the human condition. So I leave you with that, a few thoughts. I didn't want to depress you or anything. But I just want to say, actually, it's quite amazing what you are receiving as individuals and what we have received in history. And uh, if we apply those principles in our lives, we will be peace builders. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to have to help me get up. Thank you. That's good. Wow. That was good. That was deep. Seriously, it was, it was good. It was very good. Um, all right, can we all get up to our feet? We we'll do something to be exciting now, because I know a lot of you are, you're beginning to think about everything you've heard. Now you're analyzing. I can see it in your eyes. I can see. Yes, you are analyzing. I saw you analyzing. No, I'm just joking. All right, can I get you to stretch your hands up this way? Bring it to your side. Bring it down. Up again to the side. Down. Up again, to the side, down, turn around. All right, find two people and slap them a high five. Quickly, let's go, two people. Awesome, awesome. All right.
the general public is hereby invited to the Christmas Carols Peace Concerts Melp Peace Season 5 featuring worship, praise, sermon, prayer, drama, and lots more with special ministrations by Wisdom and Tony, Nathan Mount, Karen Bosdow, Azil Z, Pastor Jeff Benson, Pastors Temi and Bumi Ajayi, Pastor Malcolm McLeod, Ambassador John Bellavans, Ambassador Adeniyi Ekine and others. Date, Friday 22nd December 2017. Time, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. Venue, Warabi Baptist Church, Melbourne, Australia. Admission is free. Organized by Melbourne International Peace Concert, Mel Peace. Come and experience the joy of Christmas at the Christmas Carols Peace Concert.